Um, first, the final exam. Uh, so uh, we agreed. So final. So the 13th of January. As you suggest. Uh, four o'clock, so four to six, two hours. I I'll show you. Uh, uh, if we have time, I I'll, I'll show you a typical uh, exercise. Uh, I mean, in the same format that the, the, how they are going to be. Uh, but today, I want to finish up uh, talking about uh, uh, Hamilton Jacobi. But uh, first, I, I want to explain a few things about periodic motion. Uh, that's an important concept. Uh, I already said something uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the Kepler's problem, right? Very often, uh, uh, you are not so much interested, say, if you are discussing the motion of planets, right? The real problem uh, may, may not be to find exactly the trajectory of a, of a planet, but uh, some uh, more general property like the period. Right? You, you want to know, for, in, for instance, what is the period of, uh, say, Jupiter or some other planet going uh, about the sun. So this is the study of systems that move periodically on the same trajectory. And uh, uh, you want to understand a little better uh, this. And I draw, uh, l let me just say, uh, say, if I stay in one dimension, so that uh, my phase space is just uh, two-dimensional, right? so that I can draw it on the blackboard, and I only have one generalized coordinate and one generalized momentum, right? And my Hamiltonian then uh, is going to be something like this, right? And uh, let's assume that uh, uh, the energy is conserved, and therefore my Hamiltonian, uh, 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 it, it is also the, the, the. So what is a periodic motion? You, you see, you can solve this equation, and, and, and therefore uh, you have P your generalized momentum that is some function, well, uh, let's write it like this, is a function of the coordinate and this constant that is the energy that is going to depend on the initial conditions. So you see in phase space, uh, uh, you can draw uh, uh, your system. Well, this is a one-dimensional, so it's very simple. And you understand that by periodic motion, uh, you have something like this, right? You start from somewhere, and then you come back, uh, and then back and then back, and then back, OK? And actually, uh, uh, in this, in, in this uh, uh, when you discuss periodic motions, you, you can, th this is a closed periodic motion, like, so the orbit is closed. And usually, this is called a lib libration. So meaning that uh, you, can, you come back after a certain period, you come back exactly where you were, and you keep on moving. But you can also have uh, something like, uh, uh, so here is P, and this is Q. And similarly, this is the phase space. But you can also have a periodic motion more like this, that uh, you, know, you, you move back and forth, but one of the coordinates uh, keep, keep, keeps on, uh, on increasing. This is more what you call a rotation. OK, just uh, in case you. And actually, there is a simple example that I sort of mentioned already when we discussed the, the pendulum, right? Because for the pendulum, so take a, this is a, the ideal one dimensional system, right? So write the energy for a pendulum. What is it? Let, let's write the, so you want to write the Hamiltonian for a pendulum, right? We, remember, we, 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 you write the, the uh, so we have, a, a, as a as coordinate, we take theta. So this is a pendulum, right? And, and the energy is going to be the kinetic energy. So it's going to be the the the, the square of the of the momentum conjugated to your generalized coordinate, right? Usually, if this is L, you have two m, and then uh, uh, minus in this case. Uh, the potential energy, right? So just uh, mg L, and if you take uh, this angle, the cosine of theta, okay? 
So this is an example of a, of a one-dimensional Hamiltonian uh, uh, that I wrote uh, that way. And you see, I, I can draw the phase space of this system, the phase space of this. Well, maybe I should. Uh, uh, so I, you see, to, to draw the trajectory in phase space, you need to know uh, p as a function of q, right? So here you need to know p theta as a function of theta. So let's solve this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's trivial. You see that p theta is, uh, is the square, well, plus or minus the square root. So you take on the other side. So you have 2 m l square that multiplies e plus now the, uh, the potential energy. Okay. And uh, uh, how do they look? Uh, so now I can draw, as I did here, uh, so here I have p theta, right? And here I have theta. And you see that, uh, indeed, you can have both vibrations and rotations because uh, it depends. Uh, uh, you see, uh, in a way, you, you have a rotation if you have some bounds on the range of your theta, right? And you see that actually you do have, because, uh, uh, well, it depends uh, on, on uh, say, if the energy, if this is less than MGL, right? If the energy is less than this uh, potential uh, energy, this maximum potential energy, then you see that uh, because this is now, uh, 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 you see, this is less than this, and the cosine of theta can go from, uh, plus 1 to minus 1. So you do have a condition uh, because you want this quantity to be real, right? So you see that uh, you can solve this. Uh, uh, you have a sort of cos theta max, right? That is, uh, uh, it is what? Uh, is minus E divided by mgl, right? So you, you want to stay within that in such a way that this quantity remains. So because you have a, 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 a sort of Q max, right? Then uh, your motion is bounded, and you 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 are in this uh, liberation case, and uh, 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 and uh, what, what it looks like uh, something like this. So you st there are circles. You see there are circles, and they are like this. Uh. But on the other hand, uh, you also, if, e, if the energy, on the other hand, is larger than MGL, then this quantity is o always well defined. And so you also have the, the other, uh, you know, you have something like this, that are the rotation solution. So th this is when it, when it goes around all the way, right? The other one is the, the small oscillation. So this is the diagram in phase space. Actually, you have also limiting solution like this, right? Where you cross exactly here. This is these are uh, the case in which E is exactly equal to MGL, right? And, and here you have pi. Okay. Uh, so this is the way you draw your phase space, or better, you mo you draw the motion of your system in phase space, and you see uh, it carries some uh, 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 relevant information. We we. I mean, this is simple because it's one dimensional, so you can draw it easily. But of course, if the system has more degrees of freedom, it's still a point, but now the space is uh, much bigger, so it's harder to, to uh, OK. Now, if you have a, a periodic motion, uh, it's, uh, you, you will see that uh, if the motion is periodic, uh, uh, very often it's useful to introduce new variables new variables that uh, we are going to use. And, and uh, one of these two variables is called big J. Uh, it's called the action variable. And it's simply defined as the uh, uh, line integral around the path okay, of the P dQ. Okay? So you integrate your P along a complete period, period. So like this is the path that you integrate along.
and you will see in a, in a, well, in half an hour uh, why they are useful. Uh, they are useful because they help us to compute the period of some system. For instance, here you want to find out the period of the pendulum, but you, d you are not interested in, in solving the, the full differential equations and find the trajectory. You only want to find out what the period of a given pendulum is. Uh, you will see that uh, by using this variable, you can do that without having to solve the differential equation. So that's what, for instance, let's, uh, uh, what is the, uh, the action variable for the harmonic oscillator, right? Just uh, like a pendulum when I take this uh, at small angles. You remember that the, the P for the, uh, so I, I the momentum of a harmonic oscillator, we computed uh, uh, on Monday, I think, or, or even the day before. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah. Right, you, you, Ham the Hamiltonian was this. Right, where omega is the usual uh, square root of k over m. So you see the the moment you, you from this exactly as for the pendulum that they are very similar system. You can get uh, uh, your p, right? The p is just the square root of two m e two m e minus uh, this uh, this term here. That is minus two uh, uh, me m square m square q square. So what is the action variable for the pendulum? So I have to take the integral over a period of my uh, uh, not the pendulum, the harmonic oscillator of p. So p is this uh, is this uh, thing I wrote here. So I take two m e minus m square omega square q square and I have to integrate over over q over one oscillation of your uh, harmonical oscillator and this is easy to because remember that the solution uh, 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 you can write the solution like uh, 2e over m omega square the sign the sign of some uh, uh, omega t plus gamma, but essentially it's, it's just a, a I, I can call this just a, a, a angle variables and then I integrate from 0 to 2 pi, right? So this integral become the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Now I have q square. Now notice that when I put the square, I get, uh, right, the same factor 2, uh, two e, that, well, 2 e divided by omega right? And then I get 1 minus sine square. Uh, 1 minus sine square. Did I do that right or not? I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure I did it right. Uh, I get 2e m omega square. So m. Uh, okay, now I'm stuck. Uh,
Yeah, two. So I have two me, right? Okay, so now I don't remember how to. So over a period, so I, I change. Okay, so uh, then uh, it's 2ME, I guess, right? Uh, uh, no, my omega square is. Right, so it's 2ME. Uh, uh, so uh, then, uh, wait, but then. Uh, then dq, right, is uh, again 2me divided by m over square, right? There is a minus, then cosine theta, that becomes square d theta, okay? Huh? Huh? m omega square, no, it's just the dq. dq is this constant, right? With the minus, no, without the minus, cosine theta d theta. So, uh, 2m, so m, uh, ah, 2e, ah, okay, sorry. So, 2e, 2e, so I have 2e, right, m uh, divided by omega, okay. The integral over 2 pi of the cosine square theta d theta, okay, sorry has been a long day. Now that integral is pi, right? So I get 2 pi, 2 pi e divided by omega. So this is the value of my action variable for the harmonic oscillator, right? So what, what I'm going to do with this uh, painfully rederived result. You see, I can, so I, you, uh, now go back to the, the Hamilton-Jacobi, right? You have this characteristic function that was a function of Q and I call it alpha, but uh, alpha that is equal to E, right, in this. Uh, and uh, you see, I can, uh, what I'm saying is that now I want to uh, uh, change my, instead of having uh, alpha, that was the momentum uh, also, uh, I, I go to W of Q and J. So I'm doing a, a sort of canonical transformation from uh, Q uh, alpha, Q alpha, uh, two new variables, the first of which uh, I take this uh, action variable, okay? And you see that uh, 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 I can introduce a new variable. Unfortunately, this is called little w that is hard to distinguish. So this is little and this is big. This is the characteristic function in the Hamilton-Jacobi, and this is a, a new variable that uh, is called, so it's defined as, if you wish, the conjugate. So W, now this is big, so I, may, I should make it really big, with respect to J. And this is called the angle, angle variable. So you see, I have defined two new uh, canonical variables, the action and the angle variable, okay? And what is uh, interesting about this uh, uh, new, this is the equation of motion of this one, the little one. So I take little one dot, right, is just uh, the dh as a function of j, of j. And I call this some function of j, whatever. It's just the derivative. And I'm going to identify this uh, in a second, okay? Whatever this is, the solution of the equation of motion, this is still the, is just this new function new. Uh, uh, time t plus uh, some initial condition, okay? So it's very simple. What is the meaning of this, uh, uh, what is the meaning of this uh, new? 
Well, from the symbol you already you can already guess, but let me compute the change of, of uh, the change of this little w over the period over the the, the, the full motion and when it comes back. So I do the integral, right? And uh, <coughs> is partial of little w with respect to q dq, right? I, I go back to the dq coordinates through a cycle, okay? So you see this this quantity, then I reintroduce the w, the big w, it's confusing. Big w uh, dq dj right through this definition and then I pull out I pull out the derivative with respect to j so let me write it as a total derivative and I have the cyclic uh, the, the integral of a, a cycle of dw big dq dq but you see this this the derivative, the partial derivative of big W, that is the characteristic function with respect to Q, is exactly the momentum, right? You remember? So this is exactly, well, let me write it, is the action variable. So in other words, you get 1. So maybe I should write it like this. This is P, therefore this is P D Q, that is J, so this is one. Is one because I only have one pairs of uh, uh, of uh, action angle variables, but it's going to be a delta, the Kronecker's delta, if you have more more of those uh, variables. Okay, so you see that uh, the change of this uh, of this little W, right? that you see is uh, over a period is new tau, where tau is the period of motion, right? But this is, must be equal to 1. Therefore, you get that exactly this new is the frequencies of the motion, OK? So if you have an explicit expression of, uh, 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 of this uh, new, right, you can compute that frequency immediately because you take dh dj, okay, and you know that this is new, right, the frequency. So if you have an expression for the Hamiltonian in terms of these action variables, just by taking the partial derivative, you can compute the, the frequency and therefore the period of the motion. So if you write your system in these new variables, you write your Hamiltonian, then just by, just by taking derivative of your Hamiltonian with respect to the action variables, you can compute the, the period. That is what uh, I said. So you have a, a formalism in which uh, you don't have to solve any differential equations. You just write the Hamiltonian in, term, in terms of these new variables. And then just by taking partial derivative, you compute the, the periods. So it's very powerful. And uh, for instance, for the harmonic oscillators that uh, we just derive, right? This this is the this is the you see this is the energy. So the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator is just omega big J divided by this uh, two pi, right? Is what we computed here. So if I plug in in there, I I, I get the frequency is just the the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to big J omega two pi. That is exactly the frequency. Okay, in this case it's trivial, but right? If I take the derivative, I get uh, omega divided by two pi. That is, in fact, is the frequency of the motion, or in other words, uh, uh, omega is the so one over two pi square root of k over m. Okay, so I've rediscovered what I already knew. But this was just an example, uh, sort of uh, uh, very simple. A and now I want to uh, apply this technique uh, to uh, the Kepler's problem. Okay, so we are going to write the Hamilton-Jacobi equations for the Kepler's problem of the motion of a of a of a planet in a central force 
that goes like 1 uh, over r squared, OK? And uh, this time, we are not going to solve the differential equations to find the orbits, like uh, ellipses, uh, rather than circles. Or, but I just want to find out what is the period of motion, OK? So what is the period for a planet to come, for a planet to come back to the uh, uh, original position? OK? Can I erase? So this, this is one of the, I mean, most of the uh, studies in classical mechanics, of course, they were developed for, for the study of, uh, of the motion of planets. And therefore, this was one of the tools that was used to derive these uh, periods that they were relevant information. Uh, and uh, it's rather elegant. So. <coughs> Here we go. So Kepler's problem. You, you remember Kepler's problem, right? I hope. So what is the Hamiltonian for the uh, Kepler's problem? Who wants to? <laughs> so uh, the Lagrangian, I, I, I we, we wrote it several times. So knowing the Lagrangian, we can write the Hamiltonian. So it's going to be the kinetic part is just going to be. So let me write it in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in space, three dimensions. OK, so it's the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy in, uh, uh, of a point particle, because the problem, well, actually, is the reduced mass, because we, we, we you remember, right? You, you reduce the problem of, of the, the two body problems to the uh, single problem. But OK, this is the reduced mass. But uh, let's just assume that one is much heavier than the other. So it's essentially the mass of the, of the, of the, of the planet moving around the sun. And then uh, you write the kinetic energy uh, in terms of the momenta. So this you should know by heart that. Uh, uh, in a spherical coordinates. So let me call P sub R is the momentum in the radial direction, right? P theta is the momentum in, the, uh, in, in one of the, uh, the theta uh, coordinate. And then you have P phi square, that is R square sine square theta, minus, right, the rather plus the, 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 the potential that is minus r because it's attractive. So please try to memorize these kinetic energies, because otherwise you have to rederive it every time. And this is not very efficient. So knowing the Hamiltonian, I can now write the, uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation right, that we discussed last time. And actually, because uh, I already see that uh, we are in the situation in which there is no time dependence, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I can use W as before. That is the characteristic uh, uh, Hamilton characteristic function rather than the action S, right? So what is, so what is the Hamilton-Jacobi equation? Well, <coughs> sorry, 2M, I replace the momenta with the derivative of this characteristic function uh, with respect to the uh, conjugate uh, uh, canonical coordinate. So for PR is the WR square. And then I have 1 over R square, the W, the theta square plus 1 over R square sine square theta, the W d phi square, this is the first part, minus k over r. And this, uh, you remember, <coughs> has to be a constant, right, in such a way that the full Hamilton-Jacobi Hamilton equations can be satisfied. And so this is a constant that, uh, uh, well, you know that is the energy, so you can call it e, but you can call it alpha or whatever. So that's Hamilton 
Jacobi equation for the, for the Kepler's problem. And uh, again, uh, how, how do I go about and solve this equation? Well, as I said, uh, the on your only chance of solving this, such a differential equation, non-numerically, non if you can factorize it, right? Meaning that uh, this, this W, in principle, is an arbitrary function of the three, uh, of the three coordinates, right? But uh, uh, in this form, it's very hard to, but uh, let's assume that uh, it, it's separable, meaning that it's actually the sum of three function, functions, each of, we, uh, of, of, uh, each of which is, is, a, uh, is a function of only one of the coordinates, so like this. You understand that this is the case, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be some constant, this is some constant, this is some constant, and these constants must combine to give you exactly uh, that, okay? So, uh, separation of variables. This is a general, probably you have studied that uh, in, uh, with Narayan, that's the general technique that you use for solving this uh, differential equation uh, with partial derivatives. I don't know if you step, but we, we will, when we uh, discuss Maxwell equations uh, next year, uh, this, this is going to be very often the case. So because there you have equations that are of this form, and we will solve them using a separation of variables. So this is the standard technique. And you see that if I plug in this, uh, separation of variables, this differential equation splits in three differential equations. Uh, one, let, let's start from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, this one here. You see, you, you must have that, uh, uh, let, let's write it here, d w phi, so this is a function of only phi, so you want this to be a constant. You see, this is the only possibility if you want to, to have uh, a solution here. And if this is true, then uh, you can say that uh, the, the, the W of theta, d theta, right, uh, square actually, plus this term here, so plus, uh, so I call this alpha, alpha of phi, so alpha of phi square divided by this uh, uh, sine sine square of theta, this again must be a constant. You see, you factorize, I mean, this, if this is a constant, then you factorize the, the, the part that uh, has no R dependence, right? This must be a constant. And then whatever is left must be, again, a constant. Do, 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 are you following or one? Otherwise, I, I repeat, I mean, I mean, you want to solve this, so you see that uh, if this is a function of only phi, okay, this is a constant, then the part of this equation that depends only on theta itself must be a constant in order to cancel exactly the part that depends on r. So, so this part is the part depending on theta, so that I call it alpha theta square is another constant. And then whatever is left is the only uh, equation that I really need to solve, and you see that is this piece here, square, plus whatever this constant is that I call it alpha theta uh, square, you see divide by r square, okay, this must be equal to 2m e plus k over r, right? So my Hamilton-Jacobi splits in these three equations, one, two, and three. Okay, so uh, if, I, if, I w if, if this is my desire, then I can keep on going and, and solve these equations, and I'm going to rediscover what we already knew from the Lagrangian uh, analysis that we did uh, uh, one month ago. But this is not what we want to do today. Now I introduce these uh, action variables. You see I have three action variables, right, because I have three coordinates. 
So let me introduce uh, j phi. This is the action variable conjugate to phi. So by definition, this is the integral over a cycle, a period of, of uh, a full uh, cycle of, uh, uh, of, of motion. And I say the momenta. So the momenta here, you see, is defined as the partial derivative of the characteristic function with respect to phi, and you integrate over d phi. And j uh, theta, just the same with the theta. So what is this? Well, this is very simple because I'm, I'm, I'm solving uh, this differential equation. Well, I'm not solving. I'm just using the fact that it must be equal to a constant. So here I have a constant, right? So this is the integral of a constant over an angular var variables, right? Over a cycle. So it's the integral over z from 0 to 2 pi. So 2 pi, this constant, alpha phi. So very simple. And uh, j theta is a little more complicated because, you see, I, I have to use this. So I take this on the other side. I get the integral of the square root of, of <coughs> alpha theta square minus this term, that is alpha phi square, divided by sine square theta. And I have to integrate over d theta. Actually, since uh, uh, we feel kind of lazy, I don't want to do this integral. And uh, I use a trick. And the trick is that, uh, remember that uh, it is a, a motion in three dimensions, but re if you, if you uh, remember, uh, it takes place, because of the conservation of the angular momentum, it takes place in a plane, right? So I, always, I can always map this problem in principle, is in three dimensions, but I can always, I, I, is actually taking place in a plane. So I can always identify polar coordinates such that uh, we can describe the motions in, in, in two dimensions. That means that uh, this, this is always true, that if I take PR, uh, uh, R dot, right, so I take uh, uh, this combination, it's spherical coordinate, P theta, uh, theta dot, plus p phi phi dot. So this is the, this quantity in three dimensions. <coughs> it's always true that if this is in spherical, because of the conservation of angular momentum, this is, so pr, r dot in this plane, and then I only need a, a one angular uh, variable that I call psi. This is in polar, because the orbit because the orbit is taking place in a plane. So you see, this actually helps us here, because that means that, uh, uh, you see, these two are the same. So that means that the P, P theta d theta, right, is equal, I take this on the other side, P psi d psi minus P phi d phi, right? So actually, if I, I don't want to do this integral, I can just replace here. Here is p theta d theta, but this must be equal to this uh, p psi d psi minus p phi d phi. And these, again, are constants, right? Because uh, this is the alpha, and this is some other constant. So again, I guess just a constant that I can write as 2 pi, 2 pi, uh, alpha uh, psi minus alpha phi. So what is the third, uh, the third uh, angular uh, action variables? Um, here we are running out of Blackboard. Well, I guess I can. Uh, let me. J sub r, right? 
is the is the last one. I have to do a uh, integral over my uh, uh, cyclic motion. Or, and uh, uh, well, now I will erase exactly what I needed. Uh, okay, I, I just the, the it, it was written here, right? So you you still have it because d d w right you see that uh, d w d r square plus alpha sub theta square equal to m e plus k r and this is p r so you take p r take everything on the other side and you you see you have a square root to take so if you do that you get uh, what i wrote here you get 2 m e just a constant mm -hmm. plus this term here so let me write it 2 m uh, k over r i want to keep the r dependence in evidence because clearly i'm doing the integral with the r plus something that goes like 1 over r square Right, that is this thing here. But uh, what is alpha of theta? This was alpha of theta. Uh, you see that uh, uh, is uh, you uh, is minus. So let me write it: j theta plus j phi square divided by cu four pi square r square. Because uh, I want alpha alpha of theta, you see, can be written as, uh, you see, alpha divided by 2 pi, you get the j phi, then you have a, this is the j theta here. So you can write alpha theta, alpha theta as j theta plus j phi, right, divide by, divide by, uh, 4 pi square, I guess. No, uh, divide by 2 pi. And here you have alpha theta square, so I put it here. And it, can, it comes with the minus because I have to take it on the other side. So, okay. So if I can do this integral, then uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm happy because you see I'm going to get a relation uh, uh, between the energy and my action variables. And then as I take derivative of the, uh, of the energy, as I did for the harmonic oscillator, with respect to these uh, action variables, I get the frequencies of the motion. So I've solved the motion. You see, no, no, I, I'm not solving any differential equation. Of course, as usual, it's not that uh, I've solved all my problems. I still have to do some work. And in this case, the work is to do this integral. So any suggestion on how to do <laughs> You see it, girl? Huh? The book, yeah. right? But but this time I don't want to use the book <laughs> because I think it's time for you to review what we have done on, about the the residues. You remember that these integrals you do by going into complex on the complex plane. Huh? How beautiful! Did you enjoy that part of? Uh, yes or no? That is one of the most beautiful. So I wanted to conclude by applying, at least once in your lifetime, <laughs> that technique to a real example. So I want to do this integral, and I don't want to go uh, and, and see the book. <laughs> and so I do it uh, the hard way. And how do I do it? So I, you know, you, you write this. So let me give a name to this stuff. So I call this A. Th these are constant. I only want the R dependence that is going to become a Z dependence in the complex plane. So I call this A, I guess. I call this 2B. And I call this thing here, OK, C. This is the same notation that you find in, uh, in the Goldstein books. So uh, if, if, if I go too quickly, then you can go back and see on your textbook uh, uh, there are all the, the same steps. So you see, if I go to the complex plane, I have uh, this function here, right? Uh, is uh, mm, let, let me do it right. Uh, so uh, 
uh, and I want to, uh, I have to do this integral around a, so how, how, how is it? This is a square root, right? So you have two roots that I call R1 and R2. So, okay, this is the complex plane. The blackboard is the complex plane. And uh, you see that uh, uh, I get, uh, uh, so let me try to do it right. Uh, so I, I, I go from R to Z, okay? So I have to do, so I consider this function, this, this minus, uh, you see, it comes because uh, I, I go to, of A plus 2B, now R is Z, minus C, Z square, okay? So this is the function, this is the plane, this function has two roots, and this integral is from these two points, right? So if you wish, you, you go around like this, right? You go around like this, and this is this integral. And the nice thing about the complex plane is that, that you can, so this is kind of hard to do, but if you, def you, you change your path, uh, you pull it to, to the inf infinity, right? Presumably you have a zero contribution from there, and as long as there are no poles around, then this is perfectly fine, okay? But of course there are uh, two special points that is uh, somewhere zero here. So let me put the infinity here. Uh, you can always do that uh, on, in the complex plane, right, to put the, uh, you see so that uh, when you pull this, uh, w so this integral is equivalent to the integral, say, at the infinity that has no contribution, uh, but you have the, the, the contribution of these two poles, and that's all the integral, because the, 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 the theorem of the residues tells you that the value of this integral is the sum of the residues of around the poles of these functions, okay? So you have two, and uh, this is R zero, the residues in zero, how much is that? You see the residues is, uh, uh, is, uh, is, the, is the coefficient of one over Z, so you should look here. So it's minus, minus C. Okay, so I guess if I go this way, this one goes this way here. No, if I go this way, when I pull it, this goes like this, and this goes like this. How about the, the infinity? You remember that to, to do that, you, you have to switch, uh, you have to switch from uh, uh, z to one over z square, right? So, or, or in other words, you have to approximate this function. So you have, let's pull out the square root of A. Then you have square root of A, and let's pull uh, out Z square, right? Z, so you see what I'm saying? No, I'm just, to, to compute the function at the inf infinity, you switch from Z to Z, one over Z, okay? So, so this was this integral. So if I switch z over one uh, over z, I get the z square here because I go from z to one over z. So dz, you get the dz, z square with the, okay? Um, so I pull out then uh, the, this term with the z square and then whatever is inside, I, I do an expansion, one plus two b z, uh, so I'm pulling out the z square, so I have a 2a z plus other terms. And you see the pole now is this coefficient here because the, the res residues is always the coefficient of the one over z. So the residues at the infinite is uh, whatever I have there, so I guess is minus uh, so I forgot, this is still a square root, so I'm expanding, so the one over one half cancels, cancels the two. So I have minus b square root of a. Okay. So 
So that's a nice exercise for your mathematical method class. So I know that this integral must be equal to 2 pi i, the sum of, 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 the, of, of, uh, of the, the residues. And I have two of those, so I can write the, the result is 2 pi i minus square root of minus c uh, minus b square root of a. I have done the integral magically. So I only need now to, uh, so what is c? c was this uh, coefficient here, right? But I have a minus here. So I get, uh, let's see if I did it right. So uh, c was uh, this j uh, uh, so I have the square root of minus c. So I have j theta plus j phi and 2 pi, right? But the 2 pi cancels this. I have a i, so it just, uh, uh, well, it's just this with the minus. And then I have the other term that uh, uh, it's b. So 2b was this, so it's mk over square root of a. So what I get? Uh, we don't have we don't have this? Yeah. Oh, is this one here? We have the ah, we have the i. Yeah. So why do I have a minus? Maybe you need orientation. So I... Let me leave the, the minus because I... So you check. Uh, and b is uh, there, so 2mb. So I have a pi. So the 2 goes away. And I have a square root of 2m divided by e. But uh, the energy here, this is a bound motion, OK? So remember that the energy here should be uh, negative. So let me write it as minus e, and then I've pulled out the i that uh, uh, get, gets rid of the other i. So now I can take, uh, th 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 there should be a minus here, because I know that the result is going to be just the sum of the j. So check, uh, I, I made a mistake somewhere. Maybe, as you say, I went around the, the, wrong, the wrong way. Uh, so this is the, the energy. So the Hamiltonian, if you want, is equal to the energy. I take uh, everything on the other side. And you see that I get minus 2 pi square. OK. Mk square. Let's see if it's right. Jr plus j theta plus j phi. Everything square. So I guess here I had the uh, k, right? Yeah. K. So this is the same k. I <sighs> OK. So I, I'm done now, because I have, a, I have my Hamiltonian in terms of my action variables. And as I said, the frequency are derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the action variables. And then uh, the period of the motion is just 1 over nu. And you see that uh, uh, they enter symmetrically. So you only have one frequency of the motion. That is what you expect, in fact. is a closed orbit with just one period. So it, it doesn't matter. You can take the derivative with respect to any of the of the action variables, you see they, they enter in the same way. 
So if there is only one frequency of this motion, you can take a, a, a derivative of your Hamiltonian with respect to any of those. And you see when you take the derivative, you get 4 pi square mk square. And then downstairs, you get this to the cube. And if I use, uh, uh, but so then I can, you see, this is the energy. So I can rewrite this in, term, in terms of the energy. And I guess it's just uh, minus 2 e cube, 1 over pi over k. So I use again this to rewrite this uh, combination of the action variables in terms of the energy, and I get this. So the period of the motion right, is 1 over this quantity, so it's pi over k, uh, pi times k, uh, m divided by minus 2 e cubed. Uh, if now uh, you go back to your notes, and uh, you remember that the semi-major axis of your ellipses was minus k divided by 2 e, then this period can be rewritten as 2 pi a, where a is this uh, semi-major axis, three, uh, 2 to the 3 half times mk. So what is this law? That the period of the motion of the planet goes like uh, 3 and a half the semi-major axis, or in other words, the cube of the semi-major axis uh, uh, proportional to the, the square of the period of the motion. This is Kepler's, I don't remember, second or third law. That is exactly, huh? The area is What? The area is No, that's, that's the second uh, or the first. I, I can never remember. This, this is, was a major observation by Kepler that if you map the, the, the semi-major axis uh, against the period of the motion of, of, of the planets in the solar system, you, you fit this with this uh, three and a half law. This was a hint uh, for, for, for the fact that they were ellipses. And here we rediscover these uh, results uh, in, a, in a, well, maybe complicated ways, but uh, uh, okay, that's what I wanted to to, to show you as an application of the Hamilton-Jacobi uh, equations by using these action angle variables that are what uh, uh, you are supposed to use if you are only interested in computing the period of emotion, not in solving the equations, okay?